What's up everyone, this is FP Sticks. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about how to start predicting your opponent's team comps in Go Battle League. So Go Battle League, as we know, is a blind format, meaning you cannot see your opponent's um, team of three that they go into battle with. Um, during the course of the battle, or even at the beginning of the battle, it's very important to start actively trying to predict what team your opponent will be running, because this is ultimately going to influence a lot of your gameplay decisions. Uh, some of the stuff we're going to discuss in this video are fairly advanced, but the sooner that you can start implementing these strategies into your gameplay, you will see um, improvements in the, in the outcome of a lot of these battles. Uh, if you're able to start predicting what team comps your opponents have. So let's jump right into the content here. All right, getting right into the slideshow here. Why should you try to predict teams? Um, you should try to predict teams because this is ultimately going to influence your gameplay decisions. You might shield differently. You might swap differently based on what you might think your opponent has in the back. Uh, this also causes you to be more proactive instead of being reactive. So instead of just uh, thinking what's happening in the moment in the battle, you're able to start planning ahead and uh, deciding how the outcome of the battle might go based on the, de the decisions that you're going to make. This will also help you understand uh, what I call logical team comps. So what I mean by a logical team comp, whatever Pokemon you have in the lead, the two Pokemon in the back are going to help support uh, that Pokemon's uh, worst matchups. And we'll see a lot of examples uh, in the videos to come here. Um, but this also helps you see the big picture during the battle. So again, not thinking just in the moment. So in my opinion, there's like three things that I think about when I'm reading my opponent's team and trying to predict what they have in the back. Um, I read their team based on typings. So the second that I see their lead Pokemon, I already start thinking about what that Pokemon is going to be weak to. And from there, I can start thinking about what Pokemon they're going to have in the back that are going to supplement that weakness. Um, I also read my opponent's teams based on popular team comps that I have seen. So maybe it's a popular team from a content creator. Maybe it's a, a team that I have encountered um, a bunch when I'm battling, but I try to take notes on these particular team comps that are very popular. And then that way I can, uh, if I see those particular Pokemon in that order again, I can be like, okay, I've seen this team before. And so maybe they might have this in the back. Uh, the third way that I read my opponent's team is how my opponent plays. So if I'm in a neutral matchup in the lead and my opponent makes an, a, a very aggressive swap um, when they don't necessarily need it to do that, uh, I can immediately start to think that they might be running an ABB team trying to bait out that weakness to something that they might have in the back. Uh, or they might be shielding uh, a little bit unusually. Maybe they double shield in the lead uh, when they might not necessarily need to. And so my lead Pokemon might have a lot of play of, against what they have in the back. Some quick notes here. You'll probably be wrong a lot when you're first doing this, but that's okay. The only way to get better at this is to actively implement these strategies into your gameplay. And the more you do it, the easier it becomes. Um, there are always gonna be those team comps that you run into that just don't really make a lot of sense and really take you by surprise. But uh, the majority of the time, the people that are successful in Go Battle League, they are running these logical team comps that help supplement the weakness to Pokemon that they have in the lead. So let's jump right into a bunch of video examples where we are going to read my opponent's teams and try to predict the backline uh, Pokemon that they have there. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of walk us through a lot of different battle examples here and kind of fast forward through the matches, uh, just purely looking at the opponent's team comp and trying to predict what they have in the back and talking about my thought process as the match kind of uh, plays out. So G Fisk into G Fisk in the lead. You can take my team comp as like a very clear example of um, a logical team comp here. Uh, Stunfisk in the lead is very weak to fighters and mud boys, and so Pelipper and Venusaur are really good responses to those weaknesses. And so anytime I see my opponent having a G Fisk in the lead, it's very likely that they will have some sort of a grass type in the back. Tropius and Venusaur are the two grass types that make the most sense because not only do they protect the Stunfisk against the mud boys, but they also have play against the fighters. So as this battle plays out, 
my opponent actually makes a swap into a Drift Blim. So the Drift Blim has a neutral matchup with oppo opposing Mud Boys. It does not have a positive matchup, uh, but it does have a positive matchup against fighters. So they let the Drift Blim go down. That was one of their responses to a fighting type in the lead, but they still don't necessarily have a response to uh, a Mud Boy in the lead. And so most likely there is a Grass type still hiding back there. And as we fast forward the match, out comes the G-Fisk. And right here, they reveal that they do in fact have a Venusaur in the back. So um, G-Fisk and Grass pair very, very nicely. And in this particular example, uh, my opponent had a Venusaur in the back and they used Drift Blim kind of as their pivot Pokemon, which gave them some coverage against fighting types as well. All right, jumping into the next battle here, we have G-Fisk against Abomasnow. Abomasnow has a double weakness to fire. So anytime I see an Abomasnow in the lead, uh, you can almost guarantee that there's at least one water type hiding back there because of that double weakness. Abomasnow is also weak to fighters in the lead, so sometimes people supplement that by having a Sableye in the back. That has been a very popular team comp. Abomasnow, Azumarill, Sableye, very popular team comp, but I am immediately predicting that there's at least one water type in the back, and because of that, I know that with my particular team comp, I will have a favorable matchup in the back there. So this plays out. Abomasnow does have that double weakness to fire, as we know. I swap my Pelipper to get some farm. Not too concerned with the gameplay right now, more so just predicting their team. Out comes the Azumarill. So if they bring an Azumarill onto the Pelipper, that's not necessarily a positive matchup for Azumarill, but it does make sense because Azumarill can um, more easily tank this damage. There's still a possibility that they could have another water type in the back. So I'm gonna let this play out. And in this particular scenario, they actually end up having a Defense Deoxys in the back. So this makes sense because Defense Deoxys is a counter user that has a lot of play against the other um, fighting types. And um, obviously if this person were to run into a Lowland Marowak in the lead, it would be pretty tricky to play out, but maybe their Defense Deoxys is running Rock Slide and they'll be able to uh, supplement the, their coverage that way. But Defense Deoxys is a good response to a fighting type that they could see in the lead. Azumarill is a great response to a fighting type that they could see in the lead, as well as if they run into a fire type. So both fighting and fire coverage with the Azumarill there. As uh, I said, Abomasnow and Azumarill make a very logical pair there. So jumping into this next battle, we have G-Fisk against Deoxys. Now this is technically um, slightly favor favorable for G-Fisk, um, but we know that Defense Deoxys is weak to like dark and ghost type attacks in the lead. And so sometimes people pair their Defense Deoxys with an Azumarill. Azumarill being part fairy has a lot of play against opposing uh, dark types. And then sometimes people also put a Charmer in the back uh, to give you coverage against dark types as well. So we're gonna let this matchup play out, but this is a fairly neutral lead here. I'm just gonna throw some moves at it, staying in, and I'm able to get this move off. Out comes Azumarill. This is, this makes a lot of sense. This is a very logical pairing. Uh, because I won the lead that I, I know that I'm gonna be able to get some farm with my Venusaur here. Um, I've also seen this team come before with like a Defense Deoxys in the lead, an Azumarill, and then they actually use um, like an Umbreon as a pivot. But we'll let this play out and see what they ended up having in the back. I bring out my Venusaur. They had a stun fisk in the back, so um, this team comp uh, definitely took me by surprise. I was not anticipating that there would be a stun fisk in the back because it doesn't necessarily provide additional coverage with uh, some of Defense Deoxys's uh, worst matchups. So this is an example of a team comp that definitely took me by surprise, uh, but they just threw three very strong Pokemon together into a team, very bulky, and this ended up um, being their team, but it ended up uh, working out for them. So prime example of a team comp where the back line took me by surprise and I did not uh, anticipate that there would be a G-Fisk. All right, in this next example, Azumarill in the lead. So Azumarill is such a popular pick and such a flexible pick that there's a variety of different things that could be in the back. 
Azumarill is obviously weak to grass types, so oftentimes people will pair some sort of anti-grass in the back. This could be a Skarmory, this could be a, a different flyer like an Altaria or a Tropius, this could be a fire type like a Lolan Marowak, and um, so we'll see as this battle plays out, but I automatically know that there's going to be some sort of anti-grass in the back, which means my Venusaur is very scared of that. So I'm going to make a swap. They bring out Sableye here. So we've seen Azumarill, we've seen Sableye. Immediately from this, I'm assuming that this is Azu Double Ghost. And so the other ghost type that they have in the back is most likely Alolan Marowak. Alolan Marowak is a fire type, so it gives really good coverage against the grass types that the Azumarill will see. And uh, this has been a very popular team comp that has been around for a long time here. Azumarill, Sableye on the safe swap, and then Alolan Marowak in the back. And so because of that, I guess we can talk about one of my gameplay decisions in the, this match. Because of that, I'm anticipating that there's an Alolan Marowak in the back. I know that I'm going to need to preserve my Pelipper, and so I actually don't let it go down. I give up swap here and switch out. I know they're gonna bring the Azumarill back in to take out my G-Fisk. And there it is, folks, in the back is an Alolan Marowak, so it did end up being Azu Double Ghost, which typically is a little bit difficult for this team comp to handle because Pelipper has to do so much of the work. But in this particular example, I was able to take that game. Uh, so Azu Double Ghost is a fairly common team comp that you should be aware of. Jirachi in the lead. So Jirachi is weak to dark type attacks. It's weak to ghost type attacks as well. Um, and so anytime you see a psychic type in the lead, like a Hypno or a Mew or a Jirachi, a really logical pairing with this Pokemon is um, a fighting type that can handle those um, dark type attackers that they might see in the lead. So Scrafty is a typical pairing with these confusion users I've found in the lead because it's a fighting type that absolutely destroys opposing dark type attacks and it gives you coverage against ghost types in the lead. So this is obviously a favorable matchup for me. They use Umbreon as a safe swap. So this is most likely their pivot Pokemon. If they were to see a dark type in the lead, they'd probably use Umbreon in the mirror match here. But I'm still anticipating that there's a good chance that there's either like a Scrafty or an Obstagoon in the back. There might even be an Azumarill in the back because that would give Jirachi um, some additional fire coverage as well as some dark coverage. But as this matchup plays out, I eventually get my Venusaur onto the Umbreon, out comes the Jirachi, and it is in fact a Scrafty in the back. This is a spin-off of the classic uh, Vergiverg team of Hypno Double Dark, instead it's Jirachi Double Dark. And so when you see that Umbreon safe swap, uh, sometimes you can anticipate that they will have Double Dark in the back, and in this case it was a Scrafty in the back and I was able to maintain good alignment and take this game here. In this next example, we have G-Fisk onto Altaria. This is obviously a very positive lead for me. Altaria, what I have found with people that run Altaria in the lead is their team comp in general is going to be slightly weak to Obama Snow because it's difficult to cover all of uh, Altaria's weaknesses from Obama Snow without making yourself weak to G-Fisk. So Altaria, obviously weak to fairies, double weak to ice, gonna struggle against G-Fisk and Bastidon. And so um, oftentimes people will pair an Altaria with an Azumarill because it gives you kind of soft coverage against a lot of those things. Sometimes there's a fighter in the back. Sometimes uh, there's uh, their own G-Fisk in the back. Uh, there's a variety of different things that could be in the back with an Altaria. So immediately I see my opponent mirror with their own G-Fisk. Uh, at some point in time there was an Altaria double steel team that was rolling around where uh, G-Fisk and Bastidon in the back, but in this particular case, my opponent mirrors with their own G-Fisk, which is what I'm assuming to be the soft counter to my G-Fisk. So there's still a good chance that um, there could be an Azumarill in the back to provide them with that coverage. Now, the pairing of Altaria and Azumarill, once again, you have a double weakness to Obama Snow there, but what I've found with a lot of Altaria, uh, Altaria users is that they just don't care about the Obama Snow double weakness. Sometimes they're even triple weak to Obama Snow, and it just so happens, uh, just so happens that this opponent, yes, the third Pokemon that they had was in fact an Azumarill, 
and uh, so this is a, a team comp that is fairly common. Uh, common pairing is Altaria and Azumarill, two very strong picks, um, and they Azumarill does a decent job of covering um, Altaria's weakness to the Steel types, especially if it's running Hydro Pump, um, but they threw a G-Fisk in the back as well, which ended up working out well for them. I ended up losing this game here. Sableye in the lead, kind of strange, um, because typically we've seen Sableye used as a safe swap Pokemon because that's really where it has a lot of play at being able to flip potential matchups. Sableye is going to struggle with the dark types as well as um, really struggling with the Charmers if there is a Charmer in the lead. So I'm automatically assuming that there could be some sort of a Steel type in the back um, to help them with the, the Charmers, but let's see this matchup play out here. So we're playing this out and still playing it out. All right, the Sableye goes down. I did win the lead and out comes a Metacham. So we've seen Sableye, we've seen Metacham. Metacham gives uh, Sableye good coverage against if they were to see a dark type in the lead, but we still have not seen anything that provides any sort of charm coverage. They're already double weak to charm in the lead. Uh, now, I, I saw Sableye, I saw Metacham, I'm predicting that there's going to be a Bastidon in the back because this is a trio that has been becoming more and more popular. I've seen some content creators run this team um, and sometimes the order is kind of flip-flopped around. Uh, but this trio of Sableye, Metacham, and Bastidon is fairly common. So at this point in time, I was predicting that there would be a Bastidon in the back because this gives nice, um, very solid charm coverage. So I'm going to bring out my Pelipper and go figure it is a Bastiodon in the back. So this is an example of a team comp that has been becoming more popular and also Bastiodon in the back provides really nice charm coverage with those two Pokemon in the lead. G-Fisk into um, Alola Ninetales. Alola Ninetales, if it is charm, uh, is gonna struggle against Venusaur a little bit, but if it's Powder Snow, it has play against the Grass types, but it's gonna really struggle against Fire types and Steel types. So uh, it, just uh, very similar to Obama Snow, anytime I see an Alola Ninetales in the lead, I'm automatically predicting that there could be a Water type in the back because of that weakness to Fire and Steel. My opponent safe swaps a Deoxys. Um, so at this point in time, I don't have a dir direct response to the Deoxys, so I end up staying in and chipping this a little bit, but uh, Defense Deoxys is not a water type, so I'm still thinking that there could be a water type in the back. Another possibility is uh, another popular trio that I've seen a lot of content creators use is Alolan Ninetales, Defense Deoxys, and then they have an Umbreon in the back. So that is another possibility of what my opponent might have in the back. So this plays out here and it ends up in fact being an Umbreon in the back. And so um, in this particular case, there was no water type in the back. So I was incorrect in my first assumption, but this is a prime example of a team uh, that has become popular. And so this trio, um, the Umbreon in the back makes sense purely because this team has been uh, becoming more and more popular. And it was a charm nine tails all along but that's a very um, common team comp there. Here's an example of uh, a team that I was able to read just purely based on how my opponent plays. So Mandibuzz into Defense Deoxys is obviously a favorable lead for me. I know that my opponent is gonna be switching out. What do they switch into? They swap a Charmer. All right, so most of you are probably already knowing what's going on here, but a Charmer as a safe swap Charmers are incredibly inflexible and easily hard countered. So the only reason that you would ever swap a Charmer like that is if there's another Charmer in the back. So I'm anticipating that most likely this is DD double charm. So I bring out my Ferrothorn, which is my hard counter to the Charmer. Um, they bring back in their Deoxys and what do you know, it's another Charmer in the back. So um, yeah, this ended up being a double charm team, but I was able to handle this. But when your opponent immediately aggressively swaps a very inflexible Pokemon like that, like a Charmer, there's a good chance that there's gonna be another Charmer in the back. And that was definitely the case with this team here. All right, another defense Deoxys in the lead. Um, again, this could be a variety of, of things that uh, could be in the back with this, but let's let this play out a little bit. 
So my opponent switches in a Manda Buzz. So this Manda Buzz is probably going to be their soft counter against if they were to see a dark type in the lead. There's always the chance that there could be an Azumarill in the back because Azumarill and Defense Deoxys do make a very logical pairing, but this is gonna play out a little bit. They bring back in their Defense Deoxys. And what did they end up having in the back? They actually ended up having a Galvantula. So Galvantula handles the dark types fairly well. Um, and so this was uh, a, definitely a surprise in the back. Uh, typically, I've seen uh, people pair it with Azumarill, but because uh, this is a prime example of me reading the team incorrectly and it ends up costing me the game, but they ended up having a Galvantula in the back, which absolutely destroyed me in the back. But it does make sense because it provides them that coverage against those dark types. So really nice team comp by my opponent there. All right, Diggersby. Diggersby is an interesting Pokemon. Pokemon because it has a lot of weaknesses. Being normal and ground, you're going to be weak to water, you're weak to grass, you're weak to fighting, you're weak to ice. And so I've always found it to be particularly um, difficult to find team comps that pair well with Diggersby. But let's let this play out a little bit and see what my opponent has on their team. So they bring out Hypno. Hypno gives uh, nice coverage for the Diggersby against the fighting types. So that makes a lot of sense. And depending on what elemental punches Hypno has, mostly like Thunder Punch and um, Fire Punch most likely, it's gonna provide nice coverage against some of the water types as well as the grass types. So I really like that pairing of Hypno and uh, Diggersby there. And as this matchup plays out, we'll see what my opponent has as their third. They bring out the Diggersby, and in the back, they have a Pelipper. I really like this team comp a lot. Pelipper is going to give good coverage against uh, Mud Boys in the lead. It gives good coverage against Fighters as well, and both Hypno and Pelipper are decent safe swap options. So I really like this team from my opponent. Um, Hypno and Pelipper do a decent job of covering a lot of Diggersby's weaknesses in the lead there. G-Fisk into Talonflame is technically uh, a decent matchup for G-Fisk if you're um, good with your charge move timing. So as this plays out, my opponent makes a swap into Superior. So Superior is not a typical safe swap that we have seen, and because of that move that my opponent did, I immediately started thinking that this might be double grass. Um, Talonflame in the lead is going to be weak to water types, but it's also really going to struggle against Bastidon. Superior is obviously a very hard counter to water types and gives like neutral play against Bastidon. So I'm predicting that they might have another grass in the back. It might be a Meganium that gives good coverage against Bastidon as well, um, as well as beating the water types. But we will let this play out. I bring my Venusaur onto the Superior because that's the most logical choice. They bring out the Talonflame once again, and they ended up having a Shadow Machamp in the back, which definitely surprised me. So instead of providing additional coverage for their water weakness in the lead, they provided additional coverage for their Bastiodon and, and Steel weakness in the lead by having this Shadow Machamp in the back. So definitely surprised me and it ended up working out all right for me. But um, the Shadow Machamp, uh, yeah, definitely took me by surprise. I was anticipating another grass type based on how quickly my opponent swapped out of the lead there. So I hope this video gives you some insight on how to start predicting team comps. It is a long-term process and I am still continuing to get better at it as well, but by predicting these team comps, this will help you make more informed gameplay decisions. So as always, if you enjoy the content, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.